Congestive heart failure is a big topic, so we're going to try and cover this in a few different videos. But this is an overview just so we can kind of get a basic idea of what the word means and, and how we deal with it. It's a, an important question because it accounts for uh, more hospitalizations than any other disease in the 65 and older population. It's a uh, characterizes the inability of the heart to supply blood flow to meet the needs of the body. Sorry about the typo there. And it's often called congestive because uh, when you can't pump fluid properly, then you get stasis and you get fluid that accumulates in uh, the interstitium. So you get edema, either pulmonary or peripheral. It can be chronic uh, as well as acute decompensated um, and right-sided versus left-sided. So uh, for causes of, of right versus left-sided, we'll, we'll talk about the different causes, but the most important thing to remember is the most common cause of right-sided heart failure is left-sided. And when we talk about acute decompensated heart failure, that's usually a chronic heart failure that uh, decompensates or reaches a point where it just collapses. So if you have, a, especially in a, a acute ischemic attack, a heart that is already in failure will just quit working if it doesn't get enough uh, blood supply. So the major causes are ischemia, Cigarettes can poison the heart muscle. Hypertension can cause the heart muscle to have to work too hard for too long. If a heart muscle is is uh, laid down too quickly, if it hypertrophies, then uh, it can have a, an irregular and weak uh, muscle structure, and it can become fibrotic and ultimately lead to the inability of the heart to pump properly. Obesity has some of the same problems. Diabetes can cause uh, uh, vascular disease and, and also poison heart muscle. Valvular disease, um, like hypertension, causes the heart to work too hard. And then infectious and inflammatory causes can, can cause direct damage to the heart muscle, as well as drugs. So the, the symptoms vary depending on which side of the heart. The picture that, that I have here kind of shows both right-sided and left-sided heart failure, which you would see in, in many uh, left-sided heart failure cases because, again, you get right-sided heart failure from left-sided heart failure. And the, the physics behind these symptoms is pretty simple. If the left side of your heart is backing up, it's not is not pumping up properly then that blood is going to be stuck in the lungs so your lungs are not going to function properly there's going to be fluid building up which gives you dyspnea orthopnea and paroxysmal nocturnal dys dyspnea which by the way you can also see in right-sided heart failure peripheral edema no Nocturia, ascites, and hepatomegaly are all associated with right-sided heart failure because the blood is backing up in the, the body because it's not being pumped properly by the right side of the heart. Some of the signs are associated with these, these same, uh, same physics principles. You know, if, if we have fluid backing up into the lungs, you get rails, edema, cyanosis due to not getting enough blood to the the peripheral tissues and a gallop rhythm and uh, in the right side again you have peripheral edema your uh, jugular 
venous pressure increases as you can see in the picture here and you can get a, a parasternal heave. So the echo is going to be the major test that you use for classifying and diagnosing heart disease or uh, heart failure. You look at the stroke volume, you look at the ejection fraction, those two things help you to know how well the heart is actually functioning. A chest x-ray will show cardiomegaly as well as curly lines. These are not referring to the shape of the line but they are referring to um, lines created by pulmonary edema. An EKG can be useful, but not specific. Angiography can uh, help you to determine the cause of the heart disease. The Framingham cr criteria are, are kind of a more quantitative way of classifying what actually is heart disease. I'm not going to read down this list. This is something that you can you can look up, but it talks about the symptoms that we've already mentioned. And if you add up enough symptoms, then you can say with certainty that somebody has heart disease. The major management of heart disease is, uh, is medical, though lifestyle modifications are important. ACE inhibitors are prescribed to basically everyone with heart disease, and it's been shown that it can help reduce uh, damage to heart muscle and even uh, encourage uh, rebuilding of healthy tissue. Loop diuretics, beta blockers, vasodilators, all of these just help uh, reduce um, the, the work that the heart has to do. So uh, you remember if this cause is being caused by the heart being overworked, then if we can reduce that work, then we can help the heart to heal. Lifestyle modifications uh, include um, diet and exercise. A defibrillator may be necessary if we've done enough damage to the heart and its conduction system. And in uh, extreme cases, you may need a heart transplant. Um, this is, uh, these are uh, the credits of the images that that were used. These are all uh, Creative Commons uh, images, that, so you can look them up and use them in, in your own stuff if you'd like to. Please make comments. Uh, aside from uh, it being a little bit boring, um, it, please help me to make sure that I've got uh, good information in these. And... Uh,